Thank you. So, uh, I'm going to talk about two things. I'm going to talk briefly about the Industrial Doctoral Centre for Offshore Renewable Energy, which is a, a, a parallel uh, republic to the People's Republic of the CDT of Wind and Marine. Uh, and there's some slightly different things in the same area. And then I'll talk a little bit about some of the facilities that we have here. And I hope this has all worked because I sent the presentation across with some blank spaces in it which we're going to get filled in. So if we have some white slides with no photographs on them, that's what's, that's what's going on. ID Corps uh, is a joint undertaking between Edinburgh, Exeter and Strathclyde Universities. Um, it's actually Naomi from Strathclyde, the marine, marine um, maritime engineering and naval architecture people who are who are the, the, the Strathclyde partners in all of this. And we were funded by the Energy Technologies Institute and the, Energy and the Research Council's um, Energy Programme uh, to run an industrial doctoral centre um, and to take 50 students and train them, much in the same way as the CDT has funding for 50 students. We, um, we've been quite successful, so um, we are, we're going to get, uh, we'll end up with 68 students in the, in the scheme, not 50. So. We're carrying on a little bit. And our remit is anything to do with offshore renewable energy uh, or indeed the offshore renewable energy supply chain. We don't award PhDs, we award engineering doctorates. Our first students graduated just recently, so at the summer graduation ceremony for the university, and the university's first ever EngD was awarded. Um, we've previously been involved in programmes that graduated EngD students, but they've graduated from other universities. So. Um, they had to work out what kind of gown the student had to wear and all these kind of stuff, so it's quite fun. Um, it's similar to a PhD, you've got to make, a, you've got to make a, a, an original contribution, uh, but rather than the sort of original contribution to knowledge, it's more industrially focused, so the original contribution can be to do with the manufacturing processes or, or, print, or, or ways of working in the company, or indeed can be original but very focused research for, for that company. And to summarise everything that it says on there, this is really about training the next chief technology officer of companies and not a replacement for a professor at the university. So that's, that's, the, that's the aim of the outcome of this. There's a comprehensive taught programme. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but we train the students in... Uh, in electrical engineering, in mechanical engineering, in naval architecture, in economics, in resource assessment, in marine biology, uh, and so on. Because we want someone to have a broad understanding of all of the topics that surround renewable energy. So if the engineer working on a program is framed up by the regulator and the regulator says to them, what are you doing about cetaceans? They don't say to the regulator, I'll tell you when I've found out what a cetacean is, because that immediately destroys any confidence that the regulator has in the project, and if the regulator doesn't have contact, uh, confidence in you, then you have a very, very tough time in getting your project consented. So that's the idea of that. And we can't do this all by ourselves. You know, even with the expertise of Edinburgh, Exeter and Strathclyde, which is pretty broad, we didn't have enough expertise so the Scottish Association for Marine Science do all the marine biology teaching on the programme uh, up in Oban, and HR Wallingford do a lot of work on very large scale engineering projects with the students. So they get a broad, expert, uh, broad um, uh, experience in the taught programme. The first two terms are all taught here and we bring the lecturers from Exeter and Strathclyde here to, to, to teach and the teaching happens in the room next door. So if any of you end up here doing PhDs with us, you'll bump into the ID for students from time to time while they're here. This is some of them, uh, some of the students doing various things. So this is obviously the, the Kelvin Hydrodynamics Laboratory in Strathclyde and the, and the big towing tank uh, with Sandy Day. Uh, this is up at Oban. Um, we can't bring the ocean to the classroom five, so we send the students up there. Um, and various other things going on. This is an interesting project of can you install a wind farm, an offshore wind farm in a, in a, in a, in a coastal basin before the storm hits and uh, what happens to the cables when you, um, when, you, when you lay cables on a sandy seabed and there's a storm. They spend lots of time burying cables to discover that actually if you just lay the cables across the seabed during the storm the cables bury themselves. So you know, there, was, there was lots of fun had with that. Um, as I said at the beginning, 
We had 50 students recruited to our course so far. The last of the 50 students joined us last September. Uh, two of them haven't proceeded to the industrial project for various reasons. And uh, our sixth cohort starts in September. Uh, there will be should be eight students joining us. Uh, we it's, it says ten applicants. It should say a hundred and ten applicants. <laughs> uh, there are one hundred and ten applicants. We interviewed forty two of them and we've made eight offers. Um, and uh, uh, this is some of the of the of the existing cohort. Projects are not like PhD projects. The projects are specified by the companies that students are working for. And we agree the project area with the sponsoring company to make sure that it's got the appropriate level of rigour and stuff. But this, the PhD projects are driven fundamentally by the curiosity of the company and not the curiosity of the student. That's a big difference. And uh, then there's massive amounts of non-disclosure agreements and sponsorship agreements and stuff signed between all, all of the universities, the student and the company. So, so all of that goes on and ties our lawyers up in knots for months, but it does work. Um, this is some of the sponsoring companies. Um, the interesting thing about this is that we have people like Lloyds and BNV, which are certification agencies. EDF and EON are very large enterprises that generate energy and dispatch it to the grid. Uh, Alstom's a large manufacturing company. Flywave and the Ocean Re Renewable Energy Catapult, it's test facilities. Um, Alberton, Wave Energy Scotland, uh, this is Zyva uh, Renewables. They are device developers who are, who are developing devices. So we cover everything from from consultants to, um, to, to testing devices and developing devices. And there's no reason why, although we don't have any up there yet, why a supply chain company couldn't be involved in, in the project. So that's some of the sponsoring companies. <coughs> um, if you want to know more about it, this is the <coughs> website, and or ask me or ask some of the students that you will meet around the place. They're not here at the moment because they've just started their industrial projects and are scattered all over the country um, in, in different places. We have students working in Paris, London, Nottingham, Glasgow, Edinburgh, um, Cardiff, um, and so on, Newcastle. Right, so, okay, so a little bit about the facilities that we have here. Um, my, uh, my personal interest is computational fluid dynamics, so the first facility I'm going to talk about is Archer. Uh, Archer is the National High Performance Computing Facility. Edinburgh University operate it for RCUK. And uh, the nice thing about that is that because we operate it, we get a small, very small amount of time allocated on Archer to the University of Edinburgh. We don't have to go and ask the research councils and put a bid in for you know, can I have can I have ten million AUs on Archer? You can you can you can put in an internal application and say, can I have a little bit for my PhD student position calculations? And they'll say yes or no. Um, so we use time on Hector uh, Archer's predecessor and on Archer to do some big large scale calculations. The interesting thing about the Archer computer is it lives out at East of Bush, about three miles south of here and it uses as much electricity as the town of Pennycook. Okay. Um, it's not a big town. And it's not a big town. <laughs> it is a big computer. Um, uh, we have a machines laboratory, and this was the photograph that I was worried might be a blank space, because I didn't have a photograph of it. Marcus has already talked about what his research group does, but this is their, this is their lab where they can test machines. Somebody can tell me how many kilowatts the machine you can test on it. 30 kilowatts. 30 kilowatt machine. So you can build something up and test it um, and, uh, uh, and have lots of fun with that. Uh, we, have, uh, we have some flumes in, in the Sanderson building. So we have a 20 meter uh, long wave flume here. And we have a combined wave and current flume. And you'll see some pictures of combined wave and current flume later on in Ignacio's talk, probably. Um, and uh, and that, that can be used for small scale testing. I have a video, which I couldn't get working in time to drop in here, but I'll see if I can find it later to show people, of uh, a, a novel wave energy device that uses an electro, electroactive polymer, and I'm going to show it in this talk. 
uh, which was tested in the flu. So when you've tested stuff in the flu, it's small scale, then you can progress up. You've seen pictures of the curved wave tank. And the next uh, up from the curved wave tank, um, which is about 1 one hundredth scale, is to go and test at a larger scale. And we do that in the, in the flow wave basin up here, uh, which you'll go and see later, but they're working for a wave energy company at the moment, so they won't have time to show you this. So this is the animation of the tank and how it works. We've got 168 wave makers across the tank. Um, the interesting thing about this animation is that it was generated by a computer graphics company for us based on the engineering drawings from um, uh, Edinburgh Designs of, of the tank and based on a computer simulation of the waves. So that's real waves that you, or real wave shapes that you see. Uh, though there's a couple of mistakes that the computer graphics company made in some other areas. So we can generate waves, plane waves across the tank in any direction. Uh, it has the very fast settling time that you get with absorbing wave makers. We can also make current flow across the floor of the tank also in any direction. Um, these are the uh, tidal turbines that the developer put, uh, that the computer graphics people put in with the blades on the wrong way around. Um, and this works by having a, a circular array of 28 pumps the flow comes around through some transition veins and through the flow drives and they're bi-directional under the floor so we can pump water in any direction across the floor um, uh, to test it. In a moment the video is going to show you the one thing that we cannot do because we can change the direction of the flow uh, from, from uh, while it's operating but uh, inertia means that you can't turn it through 90 degrees at the flick of a switch because all hell would break loose if you try. We can do a few degrees a second, but in the world of computer graphics, you can do this. Um, so the idea is that you can test an array of tidal turbines, you can test a complete tidal ellipse at a demonstration site, you can put waves on top of that, and you can have a really realistic um, simulation of what's going on. So that's the, that's, the, that's the computer graphics uh, demonstrating how it works and what it does. And um, come on. This is it in operation. So here we were testing uh, an inf instrument for Rockland Scientific. So this is flow only across the tank, flow past the instrument. This instrument's not measuring the flow speed, but it's measuring the turbulence in, in the flow that's going past it. Um, so that was testing Rockland instrument. Uh, in terms of waves only, this is a video. <laughs> right, this is a video. So this is a random sea being generated in the, in the tank, uh, typical of the sort of um, conditions that you would get uh, near the Scottish coast. And uh, if you, uh, because you've got a circular wave tank, you can focus waves in different directions. So if we focus wave energy into points in the tank, we can play all sorts of fun and games. If we do this in, in one circle into the middle of the tank, we can hit the ceiling. But this is four different focus waves flashing up in different places. So we can do fun things like that with it as well. Um, and I could spend the rest of the afternoon showing you fun things that the tank does, uh, but we only had 10 minutes, so thank you. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.